Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show about newsy type stuff and things. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And Adam needs to turn down his headphones. With our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. How are we, uh, gentlemen? I was going to yeah. say ladies and gentlemen, but we are none of us ladies as far as I'm aware. I I was just going to say, I think I, I want to call it for this episode. I reckon this is going to be an interesting, spicy one because oh. well, we've had... You know, we normally record on a Sunday afternoon. We've had a bit of a delay. We're in the evening and usually mm. a Sunday evening show gets a bit, you it's know, a gets vibe. a bit loosey-goosey, just has a bit of a different vibe. I can't tell what beverage you have in that stainless steel cup of yours, George. It, it is it is um, an, an adult alcoholic beverage. It is an adult alcoholic beverage. Yep. I, I, I too have an adult alcoholic beverage. Oh, uh, nice. Adam, it looked like, was on I have a the non alcoholic seltzers. No? No, I have a non alcoholic pretend G and T. A pretend G and T. It's all right. You, but you know what? You, you, you're halfway there. That's like a Sunday evening non alcoholic beverage. It's like it pretends to be, but it's not. Yeah. For, for, for a gentleman yeah. who's been told by his wife he needs to quit alcohol or she's going to leave him. But he still has the shakes on a Sunday afternoon, and he needs the taste of a GNT to to stop his him you know shooting up a school. Basically, that or just See, you know we're, we're already there. <laughs> well, I was predicting at the start, we've already got there. We've had a school. I mean, yes, I, one minute thirty five seconds. I think <laughs> incredibly sunburned and incredibly uh, rage filled. Anyway, from yeah. being stuck in traffic for like three hours. So. Yes, perfect. That would be perfect extra- recording <laughs> conditions. Yes, that was the extra bullet point I was going to throw in. Throw in. Adam has been in a car for like two hours. So yes. <laughs> let's okay. add on top. I'm of happy that. to be in a car. I don't like being in a car that's going 10 k's an hour in a hundred zone. For a long yeah. period of time. Because, yeah, like there's one thing like sitting, you know, you're sitting for a long period of time. It's one thing to be sitting in a vehicle when you're traveling from A to B. But if you're just sitting in a vehicle that's barely moving, you may as well have been sitting in your living room at home. You're, you're, like you're achieving the same thing. You're essentially sitting in a smaller living room w- yeah. uh, w- without a TV. Uh, unless you've got one of those fancy cars with those distracting screens in the middle that may or may not autopilot hit children. Um, so I'm talking about Tetlet anyway. Yep. uh, Allegedly. Um, in order to ease Adam's rage, we're going to be talking about checks notes, superannuation tax changes. Oh no. Oh no. no. (laughs) Now, Tom, I've heeded your advice to not get too deeply ensconced into the finance chat because I want to keep Alice on board. Okay. Your lovely partner, Alice, who watches the show, uh, listens to the show rather. Um, or she might watch it as well. I don't know. Um, She's usually at work probably when we're live streaming it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to keep the superannuation chat pretty pretty mm-hmm. short. And we're going to keep it punchy. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I we're think gonna- just punchy and surface level, I and think, is the vibe. That- I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. Yeah, I don't know. Back and forth here. But I, I don't know. I just, I'm just is that what's happening right now? I was gonna. That is not a dab. What I was? Adam. No, that's Let's not, not a dab. Let's not go there. Um, Let's not go there. And I think the cat just walked into Adam's <laughs> room because the door moved by itself. <laughs> We're not even live streaming this, it's so probably literally no gags. one will see the the vision. But I'm I'm referring to it. Sundays are wild, man. Anyway, continue. Um, so so Super in anyway. order in order to keep it nice and punchy for Alice, I've decided to add a bunch of like young people slang to right. this chat about Jim Car- Jim Chalmers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Zaddy Jim Chalmers, no cap. Says superannuation tax increases to accounts over three million dollars, not a broken promise. <laughs> Did you? Is it bad that I understood that? Yeah, I, it's I, and I and, and the response and the response from the Murdoch media has been mid. Has been mid. It's, it's not a vibe. <laughs> not a vibe. Jim, Jim Chalmers uh, superannuation changes are not a vibe. So um, before, how, well, what is mid? Sorry, what to, to say something's <laughs> mid is to say it's like average. It's not very good. Okay, yeah, right. you know, it's it, Adam to put it in uh, in in Medium. millennial nomenclature that we would all understand. Mid is meh, mm. right? Or sucks, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I mean, the the response from the Murdoch media definitely wasn't meh. It was. Uh, I mean, it's I, meh I by mean, their standards. It's fairly, the sky like, included is falling slow. in. Is kind of what I would probably <laughs> yeah. equate it to. So basically, what the government announced, what the Labor government announced in a classic Labor announcement, um, kind of tripping over their dicks fashion, was yeah, that yeah. Um, they they're gonna letting out the wettest fart while announcing something. <laughs> so what they're proposing is that the, there's going to be change to superannuation 
So for account balances for over $3 million, they're mm, not going to get mm, a reduced mm. rate on the earnings that come out of those accounts. So before you would get um, like a capital gains tax amount on those earnings, which is like 15%, pretty minimal. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole idea, but for those who don't know superannuation, I guess the Americans would call it like a 401k, is when you put money aside from your from your earnings during your working career, it's done in a way that that doesn't attract as much uh, tax and yeah. that incentivizes you to provide for your own retirement. So when you yeah, turn 60, fund. 65 or 67, you can start drawing from this money that you've put aside and the government gives you a bit of an incentive to do that, yeah. right? Um, and what they're saying is for 80,000 people whose super balances exceed $3 million, mm. now you're just going to have to pay a slightly reduced rate of tax rather than an incredibly reduced rate of tax. Now, I would argue right. that's a pretty sensible, like I would say borderline insignificant change. <laughs> mm. Now, and uh, I know we've kind of already, uh, you know, given the game away here that there's been a bit of a sky is falling uh, response to this from yeah. certain people. I'm assuming it's only those 80,000 people affected who are bothered by this, right? Uh, it's not- Anyone who it would not affect in any way, shape, or form have uh, just taken this as a criticism. Well, it is only those 80,000 people that have the 0.1% of the population which have super balances mm, over $3 million mm. who would actually be affected by the change. Um, yep. But those people, coincidentally, are all donors to the coalition party, um, uh-huh. one, would, one would assume. So, um, the, uh, and if they were, they will be now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, the Murdoch media... Uh, presumably erupted um, like Mount Vesuvius um, yeah. saying that it was a broken election promise. You know, Anthony Albanese was trying to tax everyday Australians, just trying to make their way in the world with several uh, million dollars in super balance. And it's yeah. coming after your money. He said he was going to, he said he wasn't going to touch super and it's a broken promise. Anthony yeah. Albanese breaks his promise. Like he's going to break your knees when he comes for your fucking tax money. Jackbooted thugs kicking down the door from the ATO. Just cause you've got four or $500 million in superannuation. All of a sudden, you're the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, the, I love um, it. <laughs> the headline from the Herald Sun was that there's they they literally like were just like, frothing at the mouth. I mean, Ed Sheeran was at the top, but uh, just below it on the front page of the Herald Sun, you've got uh, before election picture of Anthony Albanese. We have no intention of making any super changes. One of the things we're going uh, we're doing in this campaign is making all of our policies clear. And then the headline is. Super-sized broken promise. Fears the family home a target of Labor tax it as PM betrays key election pledge. Oh, and that was another yeah, thing. Then- it wasn't even a real thing that they proposed. It was just one of the journal Koshi was just like, can you swear? Can you put your hand on this fucking Bible and swear to Christ that you will never touch the family home? And Jim Chalmers was like, well, I can't swear for like future governments. That's not- and David Koshi's like, swear, swear. To me, swear by the blood of Jesus that you will never touch it. Then Jim Jim Chavez is like, I, I honestly like, I, I don't. That's not something we're looking at. Um, and then everyone was like, they're looking at coming after the family home. So the family home is normally exempted from all of these things. It's like you could have whatever X amount of millions of dollars in super. The value of your house doesn't come into that because I guess the government wants you to have a place to live, which is fine. I Wait, guess if so you're in a regular they- home. But when they say the the like the fan targeting the family home, wait, they mean the, when people are using that expression, they mean literally the house. Yeah, I always so understood that to mean like, oh, well, you know, it's just this will affect families. No, no, no. Like, the family home is in right, when, when okay. you do income All assessments right. for these things. Like you could still you could be seventy, you could have a four million dollar home in the middle of Brighton, and still be getting right. the aged care pension because yeah. The family home, your ownership of that family home is not part of the means test when being assessed for these kinds of programs. So for superannuation, for the age pension, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. So what people I'm do- I'm assuming it would be they, a means test for Centrelink though, just to- No, that's what I'm saying. No, even the ha- the house is not a means test for even like welfare? I don't believe so. Oh, okay. Wow. They did something parody for like, obviously poor people won't oh. have a $4 million house, but I was just wondering if that's a courtesy. If that's that your primary- So it depends what, what kind of- If that's your primary place of residence, you're getting. Yeah. I was like trying to do a bit 
<laughs> anyway, the Move point on. the point is the family home is, yeah, the family home, your primary residence, the place you live is generally exempted from means testing when it comes to all these government hmm. programs. Now, Fair enough. that's not something I've, the Labor government has announced. It's not something that they're likely, announce in, in, in likely to announce. In fact, Anthony Albanese came on Patricia Carvelis's program later on in the day and said, that's something we're not looking at. And she said, why? And he said, because it doesn't make any sense and no one wants that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, doesn't stop yet, the Herald Sun, no, George. Stop the Herald doesn't stop the Herald Sun. Sun. <laughs> no. Here's the thing. I also turn to the next. But I would this, like this, this to be there. true instead, so I'm going to run with it on the front page. <laughs> Basically. When I, um, because then, it, you know, it has, a little, it has like the first little byline, and then you go, turn to page six, you turn to page six. And literally the whole article was just, it was just supposition. They got a couple of people, like mostly the Liberal Party, like politicians, to be like, well, they might do this and they might do that and they might come after tax stuff next and they might come after um, negative gearing next. And that's what it's all been about, basically from the Liberal Party's point it's of view. It's, it's, it's a beat up. It's a beat up about fear of what the next port of call uh, might no, be. No, 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 no. But if you super. ask Angus Taylor, it's because he's concerned about the 20-somethings and the 30-somethings like us. He goes, it's not indexed. Well, in 40 to 50 years, $3 million is going to be um, most people's super balances. So we're just really concerned about the younger generation. You know how the conservatives, no, 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 you know no. how the coalition's always really <laughs> concern, uh, con- so concerned. concerned. They're so concerned about us millennials. They're like, oh, that's our core demographic. We're really going to look after those guys. Yeah. In, th- in 40 to 50 years, $3 million is not going to be a, very, a, a, a huge amount of money. And how's that gonna? How's that gonna impact? Or well, to which David Spears was like, "Yeah, but like you could say that about literally every government program. Like income tax is not indexed. Like all these other kinds of taxes are not indexed. Like yeah, it is a sneaky mm. way that governments get more revenue over time, is they set a dollar amount, knowing that inflation will go up over time, and that dollar it's called bracket creep, right? They go, mm. we don't want bracket creep. Bracket creep creep is bad when it comes to income taxes. Oh, right? uh, we'll keep it." <laughs> but they're just going to just like, because they could easily legislate. Yeah. yeah. All of these thresholds increase at the same rate as CPI every year over time. So it stays yeah. <laughs> consistent, but they don't do that because yeah, mm. it is a sneaky way. The government changes something and then 30, yeah. 40 years down the line, all of a sudden they're raking in a lot more revenue mm. than, th- but, but any subsequent government could raise the threshold, could raise the mm. minimum wage, could raise income tax mm. levels. That's what they do. That's yeah. what successive governments do. They're going to give themselves yeah. things to do. <laughs> So and the clearly, thing, the thing, sorry, Tommy. Yeah. Oh, well, I was going to say clearly, like I'd imagine a lot of people uh, are buying into that line of thinking, in the being like, wait, this is a thing that might future affect me because yeah. it's the same as like literally any other kind of uh, be, be, uh, policy, be it a tax or uh, like yeah, a change on superannuation or whatever. When it comes down to this thing of like people with large amounts of wealth being affected, mm. is to be like it won't affect you but mm. then the line of thinking is but i want that to one day be me but I'll be i am a day. future millionaire yeah clearly and i don't want the system to be fair and equitable by the time i'm a millionaire because then i can't enjoy being a millionaire me a dumbass how am i gonna rape the system <laughs> when i'm when i'm a future rich if i'm Jesus you know Christ, if these rules are gonna put it like that Fuck i don't know God. if it's even that I, th- I think people literally just go like you look at the herald you look at the you get the, the sound bite in the news and you look at the headline you go oh mm-hmm. labor back to labor. their old tricks taxes break back it, break to their old answers. tricks back to their old tricks and the liberals know that the Murdoch media know that. They know it plays well. They know it's a it's a common thread that that sort of people associate with Labor governments. Yeah. And I would, I would something's falling off my desk here at the back. But anyway, um, I would imagine that it's actually quite effective. And I, I would be. I think no, this works. is yeah, these absolutely. are the kind of things that are gradually over time going to, I guess, chip, chip away. Chip at, away. Yeah. 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 The thing also is that this policy which they announced. It, they, they probably legislated this term, but it wouldn't come into effect until next term. Next term, yeah, correct. Um, which, but you know, the way they play it, they'll they have played it this week. Is, you know, like it's you know, oh, it's gonna it's gonna change your life tomorrow. Anyway, but but it's, I'm yeah, I'm all for both the coalition and Labor last time round were like very keen to like up the spending side of things at the last election, which is great. I think there should be more money spent on programs that help people. More money for the NDIS. There's a, a number of different programs. More, more money. 
especially at the state level for hospitals. There's a lot of hospital systems that are really struggling right now. Like there is a need for more, more spending within the system. Now, if you're a responsible government, what you do is you also then look at the revenue side of that equation as well, because you can't just keep spending, 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 because then you've got a deficit and then you've got long-term debt problems. So it's kind really of a responsible no government move to say, hey, we're spending all of this extra money. Maybe we should find a way to pay for that. And the coalition's like, no, 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 we're going to repeal it. Fucking just get rid of it. Fucking slash it. But that also paints them. Like, I think this is labor trying to be canny because, because it, yes, it paints labor into a corner as like, look, they're higher taxing. Right. But it also paints the liberals into a corner because they know the vast, 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 vast majority of people aren't going to be affected by this. And so it's actually a fairly popular plan. It only raises $2 billion or so, depending on what sort of time period you're looking at. Um, but the fact that you can raise an extra $2 billion off 80,000 citizens, 0.1% of the population, should give you an indication as to how fucking ludicrous this tax exemption is, how much money we're leaving on the table with these people. But it also paints the coalition into a corner as well because they've come out right off the bat and said, well, we're against against, we're against we would overturn it if you were to legislate it. Right. So, which means at the next election... That's going to be something that Labor can turn around and say, oh, well, look, you know, they're all for saying, oh, Labor's bad at debt and deficit. Well, they've got a plan to just keep a big gaping wide hole <laughs> in the deficit and the debt, and they've got nothing to fill it with. So mm-hmm. how, how, how much can you trust them? I think this whole exercise, as bumblefucked as the execution so, George, has been. George, they do have something to fill it. It's Angus Taylor's ego. <laughs> you just fit it well, in the budget. That's pretty big. <laughs> It's pretty big. I don't know it, if that it, was a hole yeah. big enough, Adam. But um, the, I think the whole exercise has been to basically send this up as a little trial balloon to see how it's all received in order to decide whether they're going to trash the stage three tax cuts next year. Because if you're doing all of this in the name of budget repair and responsible government, well, the biggest hole in the budget is the tax, stage three tax cuts, which gives huge giveaways to corporations and multimillionaires. So it's like... If this is on the block, then what else is on the block? Like, I guess the coalition is right that Labor is up to their old tricks. And my response is, good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad they're up to their old tricks because all those people need taxed. Now, we've been uh, speaking about uh, the Murdoch media uh, throughout this little bit. uh, And uh, the man himself, Rupert Murdoch, the man who refuses to die. uh, I got one (laughs) quick one before we do that. You mentioned Angus Taylor before. Angus yeah. Taylor was on Insiders this morning going, no, no, it's terrible. We're going to repeal it. Blah, blah, blah. This is all fucking yeah. bullshit. Superannuation tax changes. Yeah. But right before they went, they cut to the interview with Angus Taylor, they played a clip of him in 2015 saying how their superannuation tax uh, changes were going to, they're just like, look, there's lots of people with millions of dollars in their super budget that are you know, profiteering needlessly on the backs of everyday Australians. It's a tax loophole. We need to close it. And David Spears <laughs> basically plays the clip and goes, Hey, so who's correct? 2015 Angus Taylor or 2023 Angus Taylor? <laughs> because it seems like you had the opposite point of view then when it was your policy. You go, no, 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 it's a different policy. You're completely different. And he's like, no, but it's actually the same. It's just different percentages. It's just the that, other guys are pushing it's it just, forward. Yeah, it's yeah. their version and it's later on and it's different percentages, but the idea of the thing is exactly the same. But he's like, no, 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 it's completely different yeah. because super, we made a promise and it's in the future. So it's totally different, David. You don't get it. Okay. Oh, you don't. Oh, you're so fucking dumb, David. David, you're so fucking dumb. You don't get it. It's different because it's not me this time. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So he had a response rather than his face just imploding in on itself from yeah, the, was, the paradox. Wasn't a good response. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting his head to implode under the cognitive gymnastics that he was uh, unable to perform mm. live on television. But, or at least for his forehead to just suddenly get a rocking six pack. I felt like tweeting. Um, Good job, Angus. Well done. <laughs> Adam. Nailed it. Nice he should have. He just, I mean, gets off the set, you know, his PA or media advisors, they're going, yeah, look, good, Nailed good job. Oh, Angus Great. is so yeah, good. good. So and good literally, job. David yeah. Spears goes back to the couch, sits down and basically says like, well, he was completely full of shit, hey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that was pretty fucking dumb what he said. <laughs> oh, excellent. No, no, no. Well, speaking of people saying dumb things. Um, good middle. Well, yes, I guess. Well, I I don't know if what Rupert was said specifically in this story is necessarily the dumb things, but he's talking about other people saying dumb things in the name of his business. Um, so but he couldn't yeah, possibly Rupert have Murdoch. stopped. 
yeah, Rupert Murdoch, Fox Corporation chairman. Uh, yeah, the, the as you put it, Adam, the man who refuses to the man die. who refuses like to die. Oh, I was um, I was going to say um, uh, Rupert Murdoch and uh, discarded testicle from that uh, testicular cancer surgery you had nine years ago. Uh, not not Adolf Hitler's missing testicle. <laughs> yeah, there um, you go. allegedly. That comes us. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if, where to start with this? So there's a big, uh, you know, the lawsuit happening in the States at the moment uh, that has been levelled against, uh, Do- you know, Donald Trump, Fox News, uh, sort of that. I-, I don't know the exact specifics, but brought by Dominion Voting Systems. Yeah, who ran a, a lot of like the election. Suit. Yeah, it's a defamation suit uh, from Div- Dominion Voting Systems who, you know, built the voting machines and things like that that were used in the 2020 presidential election uh, where the Joe Biden won, but then Trump and the uh, Fox media and right wing pundits just tried to claim was a stolen fraudulent mess. Uh, and the defamation suit is around Dominion voting system saying, hey, you def- you uh, defamed us by saying that our system doesn't work. I remember when you said um, our system was made by Che Guevara? That's not true. And turns yeah. out you can't go and say a bunch of untrue things for months on end on television. <laughs> Interesting given, I know at least in Australia, uh, businesses or at least uh, corporations can't sue for defamation. Um, with, oh, really? Uh, if you have... Yeah, more than ten employees. You can't you can't defame a business. You can defame an employee of that right. business. So you could be talking. So if you know if Dominion was here in Australia and we said that specifically this one person did something incredibly fraudulent, they could sue over it. But you can't defame you can't defame Coles. So right? hang on. So does this mean employee. does this mean I there's nothing I could say about News Corp that I could be sued for defamation for? I'm oh. well in Australia. <laughs> you could maybe, but the internet being the internet, because then it gets really messy. Because like, well, I would like, might, like to clarify that this Australia. podcast was recorded, produced, and consumed entirely within Australia. <laughs> uh, well, no. If someone Shh. plays it in I don't Germany, know. I don't know if someone's playing could, it in Germany. It, I don't know what's going if, on in if Germany. If it were, I don't know. Then that counts as you communicating the potentially defamatory thing in Germany. Let me tell you, anyway. I, got a, I got a bunch of interesting theories about reptilians and uh, <laughs> and Rupert Murdoch uh, yep. that I'd like to share in the upcoming break. But uh, we'll we'll let yep. Tom finish his spiel. It's all right. We'll take that conversation offline. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that lawsuit, defamation suit's going on, uh, and a deposition as a part of that recently became unsealed. So that's when I feel mm. we've got a rare glimpse. Mm. I don't think this happens very often. Of like Rupert Murdoch speaking, like you rarely hear from the guy, right? It's all his influence kind of around in like from like Fox Corp and all that sort of stuff. Rarely do you ha- hear someone put questions to him about what he does. Yeah, generally um, it's in the so, form of yeah. um, Brian Cox as uh, Logan Roy in Succession. That's that's how we yeah. hear Rupert Murdoch speak oh, is <laughs> via several several layers of actors. Can't wait for succession to come back. Uh, Anyway, um, so part of that deposition was, uh, yeah, Rupert Murdoch was being asked about whether he was aware that some of the Fox Network's commentators, uh, specifically they were mentioning Lou Dobbs, uh, Maria uh, Bartiromo. Am I saying that right? I think so. Yeah, Bartiromo. Yeah, yeah, Janine Pirro and Sean Hannity uh, that were at times endorsing the false election claims uh, in their coverage, to which River Murdoch replied, yes, they endorsed. Which, it was, it, you know, it, it, this is in, as I said before the show, this is in the duh kind of territory of like, yeah, we all know this, but it's very strange to hear Rupert himself say it. <laughs> Because we're all like, oh, the Murdoch media is fucking ruining everything. The Murdoch media, like, has such an influence over policy or or just discussion points or just, mm. like, you know, the, the symbiotic relationship that both, like, the Murdoch media may be funneling influence into politicians mm. and then maybe politicians also using Murdoch media's friendliness towards them to funnel their ideas out. But to actually hear, like... Rupert Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch, mm. the face of like the Murdoch of Murdoch media, <laughs> sort of say it is quite quite huge. Um, even though he wasn't saying it publicly, he was saying it in a deposition. But it it's very interesting, and he had some other great sort of choice quotes 
<laughs> in this as well that I thought was was really good. Um, in September of 2020, uh, so according to the court filing uh, from Dominion, uh, that in September 2020, so weeks before the election actually even happened, Mr. Murdoch was uh, uh, urged that Lou Dobbs, one of the commentators referred to in the in the case, should be fired because he was quote an extremist. <laughs> So to hear that and he's aware of the Rupert extremist, <laughs> yeah, Rupert Murdoch saying that someone's an I extremist. I don't know. I think this guy might be an extremist. <laughs> yeah, when I thought, and like you know, being an extremist was one of the key selection criteria that would have to be referred to in your <laughs> opening letter of interest if you were applying All for right. a job at Fox News. So let's have a look at this uh, resume here. Um, uh, Lou Dobbs. Okay, um, it's just the SWAT sticker. You're hired. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and another part of it, which I thought was just a solid, amazing burn, was that he, uh, Mr. Murdoch, also said that he thought it was quote really bad that former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani was advising Mr. Trump, uh, Donald Trump, because of Mr. Giuliani's quote judgment being bad. Yes, well, um... uh, and that he was an extreme partisan. Yeah. Rupert Murdoch <laughs> criticised someone for being an extreme partisan. Uh, hey, Lou. Uh, it's, 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 Lou lovely, it's Rupert. I mean... <laughs> just, just, just bathe in the meditative realisation that mm. Rupert, I don't know his middle name, let's go with Reginald... Scarface. Murdoch. <laughs> Criticise someone for being... A partisan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. And now come back to the waking world where <laughs> things don't make sense. And <laughs> when I click, um, gently open your eyes and resume your life. Um, yeah, it's um, it's kind of mind boggling. It, it, as as you say, Tom, it is the them saying the quiet part out loud that they they know. That what there's what they say and what they believe has nothing to do with the kind of content that they espouse on air. And this, this, well, I mean, I I actually do think that um, Rupert Murdoch himself, in particular, is probably a bit more sanguine. Like for him, it's about business, right? And that was one of the quotes from this: "It's not about red or blue; it's about green." And the, the Murdoch media empire knew that Fox News knew that in the wake of the election, the 2020 election. A lot of their viewership was not happy with the, um, shall we election say, set, well, with the election results, but was not happy with the, I, I guess I have to call it like earthbound coverage of Fox News at the time, which was basically like, yeah, there's not uh, evidence that the election was stolen. And Tucker Carlson lost viewers freaking when out they, when they called when they called Arizona for for the Dems. Yeah. They like the viewership went. <laughs> yeah, everyone just turned off their TVs. And everyone was firing freaking their out. Rifles into the air, <laughs> balls deep in their hogs, going, "This ain't right!" <laughs> pew pew pew. Um, I'm switching over to Newsmax, and that's what happened. And that's what they said. It's not about red or blue. It's about green. So we know that our viewers are extremists, and we don't care. We just want them to watch us and buy my pillows and my pillow ads on the yeah, network. Yeah, so we're we, gonna we, we're we gonna want f- to be able to say that their eyeballs are on the ad space that we are selling. Yeah. So yeah. so we don't care. We know even though we know it's a lie, um, we're going to yeah. pump the um, fake news. You know the 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 big lie conspiracy that the election was stolen because that's what our viewers want. And to the extent where, as part of these depositions that have been unsealed, you've got people like Tucker Carlson. And Laura Ingram like texting each other, being like, "It's crazy, Sydney, Sydney Powell's like so full of shit," <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, Rudy Giuliani's a liar, and all this sort of like basically saying these people are fucking crazy. Anyway, I've got them booked for Tuesday, <laughs> and like going yeah, on air saying- and supporting the claim, saying if you think something's up here, you know, you're you're not mistaken, like you're not wrong, sort of thing. Like tacitly encouraging these claims, having these psychos on their show over and over again for a period of weeks or months, and then it turns out behind the scenes they're like. Yeah, I don't believe any of that yeah, stuff. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, are you hearing some of this? And it, yeah, and bringing up, uh, I think just the last like amazing quote I wanted to to bring forth from Rupert Murdoch here before um before we move on uh, on this topic, but was that, 
yeah, you brought up Sydney Powell before and Rudy Giuliani. Like they were often like people who were speaking on behalf of at the time the President Trump about all these claims and pushing all this sort of stuff forward. And River Murdoch was asked in this deposition of whether he could have requested that they not be put on air, not be given a platform to be spouting this like misinformation once they were aware that maybe it was misinformation that it was misinformation that it was misinformation disinformation yeah and his reply to it was i could have but i didn't yes apparently they're worried and about then I the ethics he just gets to go about his day there's <laughs> ethics about the corporate structure telling the you know the structure underneath what to do giving them editorial guidance you know that's not how we do things at fox news no no and i'm just like uh, what <laughs> what <laughs> how what what do you mean? Again. They're just like, no, 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 that, that'd that be inappropriate here. At Fox News, it's all about fair and balanced, you know, separating the editorial from the corporate. We just want everyone to go out there and do their best reporting. It's like, <laughs> have you watched Fox News? <laughs> like, yeah. have, you see, have you seen it? Because, yeah. Rupert, I think you might be very disturbed at what some of these people are doing on your network. <laughs> They've been doing what? <laughs> yeah, could you imagine clutching his pearls? Well, I never. I voted you for want- Hillary. <laughs> He wants to fuck which Eminem? <laughs> like just Tucker. The um, thing that, that I found really. interesting about the suit was that the suit specifically was that their defense is basically, well, Rupert himself can't be held accountable for any of this defamation because it's, mm. it's him. He's different. He's separate. Um, but also, like, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Instead of arguing the. The, the 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 corporate paper trail um basically obscures anyone from any wrongdoing um which yeah it's 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 kind of absurd when you think about it like that but i, I don't know maybe they're right they were, but i i don't know I don't, I don't know how how you nail someone down for this kind of thing cuz it's it is so slippery. preposterous when you look at the facts there was a legal professor on John Stewart's show the problem with John Stewart and um, and she was saying, I wouldn't use this case for my students because it's like too clear cut. <laughs> <laughs> like right. you never have a a like a preponderance of facts where the people part of the suit are like openly saying they don't believe in the defamation that they are perpetuating on their programs. Like that doesn't happen. Like generally people like, I don't know, they're clever about it. They say it in meetings. They don't write it down. They don't text it. They don't email it saying, oh, this mm. w- this journalist fact-checked Donald Trump. She's ruining the stock price. You know, we need to get her fired. Like people aren't normally that fucking dumb that they commit mm. those things to writing. So like I wouldn't use this. She was saying I wouldn't use this as a test case for my students because it's like, it's too easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically. It's, like there would not be any great like nuanced discussion in that yeah. tutorial. Is it just like, like, no, yeah, they did no, it. They, they fucking did it. They absolutely they defamed them. Right? That's what it looks like. Yep. <laughs> like <laughs> here's Tucker Carlson going, I can't wait to be sued for defamation, which is the thing that I'm doing right yeah. now. <laughs> like yeah. just heading off to another day at work, lying. <laughs> and I guess we we knew this. I, I think for some of these hosts it is ideological. Like, you know, Bart Aromo seems to definitely believe the election lie stuff. Um, but, like, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, Glenn, Glenn Beck was like, I don't fucking believe that at all. <laughs> it was like, that's complete fucking bullshit. Like, a lot of the, and it, it's so, like, I guess it's jarring. Yeah, it's the, saying the quiet part out loud. We know that they're hucksters and grifters and they, you know, that they're bullshit artists, but to see it in like black and white, to see it like yeah. written down being like, anyway, gonna go off and huxed again. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's just so it's fucking bananas. unreal. Like, it breaks my brain. But you're yeah. right, Adam, like the chances of them, um, you know, specifically sort of tying it back to Rupert Murdoch, I think are pretty slim, but it doesn't matter. Like if they, you know, bankrupt Fox News with this suit, which like, could potentially be a possibility because I think they're asking for something like 18, was it 18 billion dollars in damage? It's a 1.8 billion. Uh, billions I, of dollars I, in damage. I didn't even look at that. Right. Um, like that could be a existential threat for Fox News. Um, and like they totally deserve it. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, personally, I'd feel that way. Like, just em. in my opinion, yeah. Like, oh, like I, I, I don't think my body could handle the amount of Schadenfreude that would go through it if Fox News tanked. I heard oh. this. I heard something recently where they were running. Um, uh, I want to get the facts right. 
but it was something about how they were showing political ads to the Republican side of politics. I think it must have been in advance of the 2020 election, like Mm -hmm. before they ran on Fox News. They were showing Biden ads to the Trump team through Jared Kushner in advance, like basically saying like, okay, so like get your response ready for these kind of, like they were literally coordinating with the Republican mm-hmm. Party. As in like, the so the Biden campaign or whatever would have supplied their political Submitted ads an ad to on a, like on a Friday Fox News or something. To run over the weekend. They to, don't, to like Fox Corp, et cetera. And right. then Fox Corp would be handing it off to, to, to Kushner. Kushner and, and whomever on the Republican side to basically wow. coordinate their response and get something ready in advance of deadline before the end of the weekend so they could run counter responses both over the I, weekend at the same time. I have it's not like literally seen anything on that. that if that's true, that's insane. Coordinating with the Republican campaign in order to achieve the best result. So like Don't worry about it. Rudy Giuliani's an extreme partisan. He's the problem. <laughs> it's one just rotten apple in a barrel of rotten apples. Yeah, yeah. Not us. Not me. Rupert Murdoch. No could you sorry. Imagine, could you imagine if that wasn't accepted in the company culture, like doing that without Rupert Murdoch's permission, like I would assume that I would have my balls roasted if he wasn't okay with that, with with Fox News supporting the Republican Party. Like everyone at the organ, he doesn't need to go and explicitly say like, we're going to go commit fraud on the American people in order to advance the Republican. He doesn't need to say it because like everyone knows who Rupert Murdoch is and they chose to work at Fox News because they're hopeless partisans. There's an assumption. There's, yeah, mm. we all know that we're in the tank for the Republicans. That's why this building is here <laughs> yeah. in New York. That's why this building exists is to be a fucking mouthpiece for the Republican Party. So, like, yeah, I don't know. The allegation that he would need to say, like, oh, we're all in the tank for the... You don't, need to, you don't have to say it because we all know who you are and where you stand on these things. You wouldn't do these things in a company if you thought the boss wasn't okay with it. You know what I mean? Like mm. the fish is from, to, the, from the head. It's probably a good way to segue to our next one. Uh, speaking of uh, doing things, if you knew or did not know that your boss was okay with it, uh, the back in Australia, the Robo Debt Royal Commission uh, mm. continues on. Mm-hmm. Uh, last couple of episodes ago, we spoke about um, Tudge and his um, involvement uh, with the, the program, particularly I think early on in its inception. Uh, obviously, this program went until 2019. So by this point, um, Stuart Robert was actually the minister uh, applicable and there was uh, a department secretary uh, of the human services, a secretary, Renee Leon. Uh, so basically, Renee Leon's been um, up in the witness stand giving some juicy details. <laughs> and... I guess it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you get into a role, you have a look at the stuff in your, on your, in your to-do list and in your, you know, your emails, whatever else, and you mm-hmm. go through, whatever, you go through your, your tasks. You've had your hand over. You've had your hand over and you go, yep. what the fuck's going on with this? What the fuck is this? Anyway, <laughs> Sorry. she basically- but Before you go on with that, yeah. I wanted to find this, the sourcing to make sure that that claim that I made before was true. Unlike Fox News. Um, So this is an article from the Washington Post. (laughs) Quote, during Trump's campaign, Rupert provided Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner with Fox confidential information about Biden's ads along with debate strategy, the filing reads. In a parenthetical, it explains some or all of that confidential information as providing Kushner a preview of Biden's ads before they were public. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah, that's wild. Damn, Daniel. We'll put the uh, the source in the show notes. Washington Post. Yeah. Um, Sorry, go on. Yeah, now I've completely forgotten where I was. No, so so uh, uh, Renee uh, Leon had received, like, you know, uh, was the Department of Human Services secretary going through all the stuff, like, towards the end of RoboDebt. And, you know, February 2019. Yeah, Re- yeah, Renee- discovered, yeah. Hey, you know what? This thing might be unlawful. Yeah, Gee Renee <laughs> Renee Leon is the person coming in to the casino and say, I'm shocked, shocked to find gambling at this casino. <laughs> yeah, just be like, hey, this thing we're doing, um, I, I, I've seen it, you know, might be unlawful. You know, did, did some checking. It turns out it's unlawful. Uh, hey, hey, Stuart, Mr. Minister person, this may be unlawful. Um, yeah, and Stuart Robert didn't really reply well to that. Like, you'd mm. normally expect, hey, this thing we're doing is unlawful. We should probably take measures to stop this, or at least 
look into it a bit more, uh, to which uh, that's not what Mr. Roberts said, uh, at least according to Professor Leon. Uh, Professor Leon said that Mr. Robert replied, we will absolutely not be doing that. We will double down. <laughs> this is in, can I remind you, this was in 2019. So there's been like a year and a half of RoboDebt articles in the public media, the public crucifying this program, this, yeah. saying this is like double plus fucked. <laughs> so it's a year and a half. They finally sought some legal advice. And he replied, apparently, according to her, quote, legal advice is just advice. <laughs> I could ask anyone for advice. <laughs> I could ask nah, you for advice. The, um, I could ask my nan for advice. It's just yeah. advice. It's just people telling you what yep. could or should be done. That's how it's defined in Webster's Dictionary. Advice is just a recommendation of something that yep. should or could be done. <laughs> It's the Captain Jack Sparrow defense. Uh-huh. Mm. They're really more guidelines. Guidelines. <laughs> like, you know, pirate code isn't rules, they're guidelines. He stopped short of saying, I am the Senate and cackling madly, but um, we have to assume that was implied. Oh, Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing, thing was that- Fingertips, though, definitely did happen. His, oh, no, his in, fingertips were like Professor Leon's testimony. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, 100%. Lightning shot from Stuart Roberts' fingers. <laughs> um, the interesting thing is that Leon, Renee Leon, she actually stopped the program like herself, like in ad- in advance of any decision from the government to well, do so. Yeah, like, this is what she, she said. Quote, I ended up having to stop the program in advance of a decision from the government to do so. So at no point did the coalition government say, uh, maybe this is no good, we should stop the program, we should suspend it, we should do a fact-finding mission, we're going we're gonna to have an inquiry, we're going to find out if this is legal. At no point did the government do that. They were all just like, making it rain. <laughs> dollar, yeah. dollar bills, y'all. Uh, and it was a, a public servant, like, against the advice of her minister, I suppose, to be like, hey, we're shutting it down. We're just going to shut this down because I don't you know want what? to go to jail probably in future for for doing I'm just going to shut it down. I'm going to go ahead and shut George, it down. George, <laughs> you know what? I think that's fair enough. It gets the against the advice of her own minister, as the own minister said. <laughs> Just advice. Advice no, is just advice. Just went ahead and did she the goes, thing. I took your advice on notice. <laughs> it's just advice. <laughs> it's just advice, isn't it, Stuart? Jog on. Um, she was asked um, why she thought the illegality of the scheme was not picked up earlier, and her response was, was kind of clever. But she said one possibility was that someone knew, but they had already raised the idea with the government that would save billions of dollars and they were reluctant to withdraw it. And then she added, I hope that isn't the case. <laughs> that, would be, that would be <laughs> naughty. Yeah, 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 I hope that isn't the case. case. Smash <laughs> cut to someone going, yeah, I know it's illegal, but we're going to make billions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like, Stuart yeah. Rob just like just like fist bumping each other. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like slow motion 80s freeze frame of them like fists in the air going, yeah, yeah. ripping off public citizens. Everyone in the commission room just hears Ron Howard say, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> huh? Who keeps saying that? <laughs> um yeah, so, I mean, we know, basically, from the evidence that was given a couple of weeks ago, that it definitely was raised. It, that was, it was raised. It was probably <laughs> illegal. <laughs> um, yeah, so, anyway, there's just that, yeah, the Royal Commission just keeps giving out little little tidbits, which are... Uh, little tidbits. Little nugs. Always enjoyable. Little nugs of joy. Mm. Um, um, speaking also, of... So, also- did Stuart Robert actually, like, say something as well, to say, like, as a cabinet minister, it was my job? to double down and defend policies that I find objectionable. Like he tried to... I don't remember that. I, 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 was that him? I thought that came out of this as well. Just speaking of like the Tucker Carlson texting, like, oh, geez, going to go do some grifting now kind of idea that, yeah, he essentially said the same thing. It's like, as a cabinet minister, we all have to be on the same page and defend policies. Like the that's Australian the burden public, of being a cabinet minister. It is the burden of democracy to when the public has entrusted you with their dollars. To just switch off your brain and be a partisan hack, <laughs> relentless against all the facts at all the costs. You just want to go to bat for your party and nothing else at all times. That really secures the public trust. <laughs> not Pauline Hanson, though. She's not going to stick by any party line, George. I mean, it's her own party line, to be well, fair. Well, the, the, Pauline Hanson's One Nation's Pauline Hanson sticks yeah, by so the party line, party. which is Pauline Hanson's One Nation's yeah, yeah. party line. So. Um, so the Pauline's been quite quiet, really, of late. We haven't had any. Um, I'm sure she's been doing stuff, but no one really covers it anymore because it's like, oh, it's Pauline Hanson. Been great, um, hasn't it? But she, she had a. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Um, 
similar to the video we had last week, which was Alex Ante, you know, up to his antics, um, questioning the voice uh, in a Senate estimate or it was a committee, one of the one of the parliamentary committees. It was like a um, constitutional committee. Constitutional like that. committee, yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, so, yeah, Pauline uh, was in uh, just the, the Senate, the, the upper house uh, the other day, and she was asking some questions in question time. Uh, and she put, this up on her, she put this up on her Facebook page, similar yeah. to what Alex Antic did, and was basically like the headline of, oh, well, here you go, the, the headline of the, the video or the, the title of the video. Uh, it's quite a long title, to be fair. Uh, the refusal of the Albanese government to answer even the simplest question about the voice referendum is simply embarrassing. And I've got to find the rest of the headline now because now it's They say it's about, off. quote, yep. consulting on matters that affect Indigenous Australians, unquote, but then can't even tell you what those matters will or won't be. They claim the voice would have fixed all the problems of Alice Springs, but they can't explain how. They say the voice is about listening, but they refuse to commit to listening to Australian people if their race-based referendum fails. Yeah, Labor exactly. talk about respect, but if they had one shred of respect for the Australian people, they would give them a straight answer. Um, so here's Pauline Hanson um, saying a bunch of bullshit on the floor of Parliament. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. My question is the Minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Wong. The Prime Minister has stated that an Indigenous voice to Parliament will consult Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on matters that affect them. If that's the case, will you please provide the Australian people and me with the government's list of all the matters which don't affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, thank you, Senator Hanson. Minister Wong. Uh, given I'm asked about uh, the voice, I would like to acknowledge, if I may, the 10 leaders from empowered communities who are in the President's Gallery today uh, as part of their visit to Canberra to advocate uh, for, from the grassroots for constitutional recognition through the voice to Parliament. And uh, second of all, I'm sorry about Pauline. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, Senator Hanson, I, I appreciate your position on The Voice and I think you've made that clear and probably no answer I, I will give you will satisfy you because I think you have made your opposition to this clear. Uh, I would make this point, uh, I would first make the point The Voice is about two things. It is about recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in our constitution and it is about consultation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on matters that affect them. Uh, in terms of the, the various aspects of detail, um, can we, I, I would make two points. First, the referendum working group have already offered principles of what the voice would look like. The second point I make is if Australians see fit to change our constitution the way I hope they do, you, alongside with every other member and senator in this parliament, will have a say in how that voice operates because it is parliament that will legislate. There will be consultation and there will be legislation, just as you have a right at the moment to, be, uh, to, to uh, respond to and deal with legislation that comes before the chamber. And I Thank you, Senator Wong. Senator Hanson, first supplementary. No. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yep, you're right. Are you on a point of order? Matter of re relevance, it's passed half the time of the, of the ministry to respond to my question. It was directly matter. Uh, I asked directly um, about <laughs> what matters that will um, that, that do not, don't affect the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. For being a racist, she sure is a bumblefuck, isn't she? <laughs> she just reminds me of a racist and George. The point of the order, it bit 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 yeah. It's like, oh, yes, style. Like, that's sort of like, I can't, the accent. Yeah, if a member of Prue's party, uh, yeah. you know, burnt a SWAT sticker into their lawn. Yep. Hasn't even touched uh, on that thank whatsoever. You, Senator it's a matter Senator, of relevance, You've please. raised a point of order. Please resume your seat. You also <laughs> asked at the beginning of your question about uh, a broad question about the voice. You referred to comments the Prime Minister had made, so that Minister Wong is being relevant. Please continue. Uh, well, Senator Hanson, I'm not, not, not Senator Hanson. I am trying to respond very honestly because the reality is those no because those, those matters those matters will be the subject 
of a discussion in this parliament and a discussion with the community should Australians vote for a constitutional recognition. What people, what people... Order, Senator Hanson. You can't quite hear Senator it. Senator Hanson, order. You've asked your question. Hanson's Senator Hanson, I've called you to order. It's an order, not a request. The minister is answering your question. You may not like the answer, but she's answering your question. Please continue, Minister Wong. Senator Hanson, through you, uh, President, what Australians are being asked to vote for on is a principle of whether there should be a voice. The detail will come from the parliament and the government that is elected by the people, and it is for the parliament and future parliaments to determine the detail of how it works, including the issues that you describe. Thank you, Minister Wong. Oh, a very, she wouldn't, a very she wouldn't good give answer. me the detail. She oh. wouldn't give me the details and the it list. Is, the, detail oh, is, the detail is you're a lawmaker. You get to decide, Pauline. Mm. <laughs> you yeah, would be a be part of the process. With the bumblefuck kind of questioning that Paul throws at people. Revelance! You know what? <laughs> like Penny, I, Penny Wong, Senator Wong did a fantastic job, I think, answering that. Just like that's Herculean that, that was, patience. Was, was, Very much yeah, the adult patient, in the room. Succinct and accurate, from, <laughs> from my understanding, and very good. And also acknowledging who was there to uh, also be there in Parliament today as part of consultation. Like, I think, yep, gr amazing answer in the face of overwhelming stupidity. The thing is, like, both Antic and Pauline, they both what they're crapping on about in these Facebook videos mm. is like they're they're missing the entire point. They're just they're just like people like and Labor keeps saying the that voice, doesn't sound like them. We're doing a say, can you be missing a principle. point that you never intend to engage with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really missing it, is it? If like, you don't intend to shoot the target, you don't miss it when you don't hit no, it I with the bullet. <laughs> I, I think they are achieving their yeah. goal in deliberately missing the point. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. I genuinely think, in some guys, in some ooh, excuse me, in some cases, um, little little Freudian slip of the tongue. The that that they wholeheartedly don't understand how the referendum works. No, like I think no, no, no. They're not. Mm. No, I, I reckon they're that give, stupid. Giving them so much credit in assuming. I reckon they're so stupid. They don't they, understand. No, no, it's, Adam. It's both. They are both bad faith actors and morons. Right? We can't just put it down to that like they're just fucking idiots. They don't understand how government works. They say relevance instead of point of relevance. Like, yes, they are dumb. And <laughs> the other. <laughs> they can both be wrong and shitheads. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Top so comment. How can you trust the government when they can't ask you a simple question? How can the people have a view when they don't know what's in their voice? Don't give up, Paul Aid. As jo yeah. Julie Townsend. I'm sure there will be. Full More name him. Fuck it. If you're happy to put your name to that dumb fucking comment, Julie, we can talk about your full... Let's go on a Facebook profile. No, <laughs> no it's not. not. Let's, let's not. <laughs> ah, Townsville. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. <laughs> um, uh, if, the, if the city of uh, Townsville wants to direct their hate mail to George... Our uh, natural his, selection his show at gmail, at gmail... At gmail.com, titling your email... I am the only other person in Townsville that's not a fucking idiot. Townsville is lovely, George. It's definitely a place. <laughs> I've never been. And it's definitely a location on the map. Uh, bet you it's not raining filled, in Townsville. Like filled with voters. Right just brimming with voters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, the, yeah, it's... it's uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll get more of these before the, the referendum happens and bring them on because they make me laugh slash cry. At the same time, which is, you know, a, a feat in of itself. Um, do you want to talk about uh, the fact that the government's basically making you pay to have an electric car? Through no, no, we're going to ditch that. I mean, that's the story. The Victorian government yep. is trying to tax you for in place of their, uh, mm. their uh, fuel excise tax. Mm. They're still trying to get money out of you if you use the road, even if you're doing a good thing and using an electric vehicle. They still want you to give money, which that seems like bad. Bad, Dan Andrews. Bad. Eddie. Don't do that. I'm not going to tell yeah. anyone about this, Dan, but you and me better have a chat after this. Come and see me after class. Don't worry. He's building a sky rail. It's all good. Okay. Several sky rails. Will it run on electricity, mm. Adam? Mm. Will it be charged under these new rules? Think about it. You'll pay that. It. $4.50 to go one kilometre. The irony is you're going to see this clip 
on Pauline Hanson's Facebook page. She's going to clip it out. So see, even the libtard lefties agree that Dan Andrews is Satan. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Pauline, you better not edit this to make it sound Pauline, like I said and then say the bad don't, thing. Don't isolate this comment. Dan Andrews is a Nazi. Don't isolate that, Pauline. <laughs> I know you. I know you try it. I know you. You're absolutely chomping at the bit to say that. That's not true. We don't believe that. We just disagree with him on this one policy area. Russia. Uh, speaking bad guys. Russia. 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 Russia are still are still invading Ukraine. As still it doing out. it. Um, yeah, still, still waging war on Ukraine. Uh, a war, yeah. a war they started, um, but not according to Russia. Well, if you, you listen know, to Sergey Lavrov, um, yeah. <laughs> he said that uh, the war which was launched against us is how he described the Ukraine conflict during a diplomatic forum in India. Also, also the full quote, which I thought was quite interesting, was like, "Yeah, there was a G20 uh, like foreign ministers meeting in New Delhi." Uh, recently, so uh, yeah, Sergey Lavrov, being the Russian foreign minister, was asked a question uh, about the the war in Ukraine. I think it was mainly about um, supply chains, like the effect on supply chain. I think that uh, that it was affecting, and that the effect on supply chain it was affecting. That was a terrible sentence. Anyway, um, but his response was he he referred to the war which we are trying to trying. stop, I'm trying which so was hard. launched against us using, and then he's cut off because the whole audience just goes, <laughs> just starts laughing. Yeah. Like just, what? You're going to sit up there like as like Captain Russia and say that you're trying to stop the war that you're doing. Are you trying to stop hitting yourself with your own war? <laughs> Uh, bro, these fucking Ukrainians won't stop invading their own territory. It's it's fucked. We're trying to stop this. We're like, yeah. bro, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop stop yeah. hitting us. Stop hitting yourself. Stop it's hitting so yourself. Good. You even heard a voice in the crowd go, "Come on!" <laughs> Someone like up the back. It was. It's delicious. Um, have you? Are you able to play the clip, George? I feel people need um, to hear it. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't tested it, but we can. Uh, we can absolutely play the clip. I like Russian uh, Russian leaders being humiliated as much as the next man, as long as the next man is not Vladimir Putin. You know, uh, the war uh, which uh, we are trying to stop and which was launched against us using Ukraine, <laughs> U- Ukrainian people, uh, of course, it influenced <laughs> influenced influenced uh, the uh, policy of Russia, including energy policy. Energy dingling, sorry, dingling, and energy that's policy. and that's the bullshit hypocrisy bell. I'm sorry, Sergey, you have to step down now. You've yeah, hit just, your max. Absolutely, just wonderful. Like you know, it's one thing. Like yeah, I, I, we've been talking about this for like many years on the show. We always see like clips from Trump, from from like Scott Morrison when he was prime minister, all this sort of stuff where they say things just like that are patently outrageous and just like how do you have the balls to get up in front of everybody and say something that is just blatantly no, no ridiculous one, no one believes context. your hostage video sergey like, exactly <laughs> no one, no one so fucking buys having, this for a second people in the room yeah. laughed at you to your face like yeah. you were doug stanhope doing a bit you know what i mean yeah, like, like mostly we see all those kind of clips happen and you know people keep like a measure of decorum in the room and it's all the commentary later that's all like 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 shitheads like us but then to see people in the room just cackle with laughter yeah at like the russian foreign minister oh delicious and it's actually like that since the invasion began but it's not for it's not for a world audience tom it's for the russian yeah but the the russian audience news outlets will, will take that bit they will talk about Flip it out before the laughter, the laughter. <laughs> cut yeah, out the yeah. laughter. Oh, 100%. And it'll be fine. Basically, yeah, look, Russia is is increasingly trying to play a narrative game internally so they can send young Russian men to die on the front line um, mm-hmm. where the war is somewhat justified. It's like the US trying to do the mental gymnastics of going, uh, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, think, and that's something that uh, Sergei brought up, I think, also in a, in a later quote. He's kind of mm-hmm. like the hypocrisy of the West to, like, be uh, criticising us, yeah. in, like, you know, criticising uh, false pretenses starting a war. Not or a free whatever. pass, like, though, Sergei. Like, you don't get a fucking hall pass because pass. the US was, on children. Was, can I just say, one of those, Iraq, oh, the worst person you know made a great point. Iraq. <laughs> Still a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've been saying it all along. Iraq, 
the the bad ideaness of Iraq persisting <laughs> does nothing to do with this. Like we all both things are Iraq true. Well. Iraq was yeah. a bad idea. This is a bad idea. And to which um yeah, I think Antony Blinken basically said, like, hey, there's a really super easy way for this war to be over, which is for the Russians to go back the fuck to Russia. Yeah, just to leave maybe the country. Like- Come oh, back over leave the Ukraine. And stop shelling? That'd be great. Leave Ukraine, uh, go home. The war's over tomorrow. <laughs> guys, yeah. guys, don't worry though. China has a peace China's plan. China's got a plan. And if China's I China's got a plan, a plan. If oh, and the Chinese come up with the best plans. You ready That's to hear great. the Chinese plan? Let's let's read it out. So point one respecting the sovereignty of all countries. That's it. The end. Go home, everyone. <laughs> the list done. Job done. Now I wonder. Before we go on to read the rest of the list, because it's kind of irrelevant. This yeah. first part of the list could be read in two ways. It could be, and this is how I think the West is reading it, like we need to respect the sovereignty of all countries. The territorial integrity of Ukraine is important. Russia should stop its war of aggression and they should go home. And all the all the you know, all the good, you know, global citizens pat themselves on the back, they go, Yeah, China agrees with us. Or <laughs> For everyone else in the world, they're looking at it going, respecting the sovereignty of all countries, okay? Ukraine should respect Russia's claim of sovereignty on their lands, just like Taiwan should respect the claim of sovereignty that we have on their land. (laughs) You should respect the sovereignty of all countries, right? Uh huh. Get it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Get it? Everyone? Get it? Uh, Got it? Good. Okay, so we're invading. <laughs> point two abandoning the Cold War mentality. Oh, point good. Three. I hadn't thought about that. I just, everyone, abandon your Cold War mentality. You know, you're yeah. thinking about it? Stop thinking about it. Yeah, China out. It. Boom. <laughs> Number three cease hostilities. Yeah. It's probably, it's probably good. a good start. That's yep. probably a good way to end the war. <laughs> Or off the back of that, resume the peace talks. Sure. But Makes again, sense. peace talks mm. can mm. only resume if there's something to negotiate over when there isn't really, I if just you're just a foreign them. country that's just invading in another. In a room. Re- right. Renew the peace talks. But the mm. outcome of those peace talks needs to be Russia goes home because otherwise yep. you're rewarding them invading another country by yep. giving them a piece of land. Yep. Right. you got to resolve also, the humanitarian crisis. Yeah, I was going to say, step five. I hadn't thought about that. Step five's a big one. Just resolving the humanitarian crisis. Like, that's <laughs> five. Th- that is fifth on the list. <laughs> if the people, well. number five. Number five. But the Cold is, War mentality is number yeah. two. <laughs> Let's yeah. make sure we get that sorted first. And, like, fucking people throughout history have been trying to resolve the humanitarian crisis yeah, at cheers. one time or another. And uh, they've never really fixed it. <laughs> so. No, that's we'll, awesome. rip through, we'll rip through the rest of these just because it, it, it is 12 of them. Uh, protecting civilians and prisoners of war. Point seven, keeping nuclear power plants safe. Seven! I like that. Nuclear <laughs> power plants is seven! <laughs> I mean, you've got to cease the hostilities to protect the nuclear power plants. So I can sure. see that they're sort of doing a logical... It's a logical progression. Oh, no, but remember, Point you've got to respect the sovereignty of all countries before you cease hostilities against them. That's true. Them. Yeah. You respect my fucking sovereignty before you stop... Look, like, before I stop shelling you. <laughs> <laughs> but just say it, say it from my mouth. Yeah, uh, my ears, rather. Uh, re- no, mate, reducing strategic risks. I don't ah. know what that means. <laughs> like, I didn't think I don't about know reducing. What that means. Oh, bro, it's so good that you said that because I was like, oh, should I reduce strategic risks? <laughs> I was like, nah, don't worry about it. But China's come out with this plan. I go, oh fuck, I really should reduce strategic risks. I didn't even, uh-huh. like. Is that a priority? I don't even know because yeah. But that's Number a good point, nine. China. Thanks, China. Mm-hmm. Facilitating grain exports. Number 10, stopping unilateral sanctions. Number the 11. U- the US, Europe. Who are they talking about there? Wow. Sanctions yeah, on Russia, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's interesting. That's just kind of buried in there at number 10. It's just kind of like, yeah, facilitating grain exports. Stopping unilateral sanctions. <laughs> Keeping industrial <laughs> and supply chains stable. <laughs> like, just, Who doesn't love know. a good supply chain? What, yeah, what did like, I say about sanctions? Sorry, yeah, I missed it. Stopping unilateral sanctions. Giving us Taiwan. Uh, and also <laughs> <laughs> like just slipping stuff in there. And uh, number 12, giving us the launch codes. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it. I think we got it, guys. <laughs> Number twelve is promoting post-conflict reconstruction. The thing that I find yeah, put, put the, up the, some the posters. Best one I like. <laughs> yeah, promote number eight. Don't, don't run some, it, run some Facebook ads. Yeah. Number eight, reducing strategic risks. It's kind of like you know when you do the group assignment at uni. Yes. And then you're like, 
Yeah, we've got to throw some jargon in there. So we'll we'll just okay. Uh, so we're going to reduce. It's some, literally a group some... assignment for an MBA. We've got a four by four that we need to fill out. What are we going to throw in there? Reducing strategic risks. Yeah, that's a fucking distinction. <laughs> You're a yeah. genius, Greg. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of thing, if you put that on a PowerPoint presentation with a meaningless pie chart, people will be like, who knows what he's talking about? And <laughs> and don't forget, you need an arrow going up and to the right for, mm. pro- for profits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So this this peace plan came out, and they China were China are basically positioned <laughs> is, themselves. Is it a peace plan, sort of, or is it a bunch of meaningless slogans? <laughs> listen, listen. China have positioned themselves as they're meant to be. They're trying to appear as a neutral party that could potentially be the, the you know the, the adult in the room to try and bring mm. everyone together. Um, at the same time. They, they may or may not be thinking about supplying weapons to Russia, but that's fine. Mm. <laughs> don't, don't worry about yep. that. They've well, also got a peace and plan. The, and the rumours are that case. they they may have already been supplying some wep- some weapons to Russia. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's not been like proven, but th- there are the thoughts about because I mean the the Russians keep finding all this ammunition and like like the amount of ammunition that's get, they're currently going through in this war like, is you know, like more than shells. is being made by the world. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's how much Easy. ammunition is being used in this conflict. Well, because unless you're in a wartime footing, you're not yeah. making a shitload of your ammunition all the time. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, something like the amount of shells that are being fired in a month are more than like a year of strategic reserves or something like that. It's like every month they're chewing through yeah. thousands and you know, millions mean, of pieces of ammunition. So it's like- the yeah, Russians they're getting it from somewhere. have have like a large reserve of old Soviet ammunition, but it's all fifty years old. Like they've still got AK rounds and stuff, but like this, we're talking about artillery shells here, and yeah. there is only a limited amount of limited amount of them. One and- of the things the US has said is that they're not necessarily going to have the ability to keep giving them to Ukraine because they will literally run out. Run out, yeah. Um, and they've got to look after themselves first. But, but, but China has is- said it's got a no-limits friendship with Russia. Like, for someone who's trying to be, like, impartial, mm. if you if you said you had a no-limits friendship with me, I'd be, mm. you know, be, you know, steady on. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because- Take, take the, me out to dinner first. <laughs> Buy the- me a couple, give me a couple of shells. <laughs> Well, but it's more like if if Adam was mediating an argument between you and I, George, be like, mm-hmm. I'm just I'm Switzerland here, but yeah. I have a no limits friendship with George, and uh, <laughs> I even refuse to call this an argument. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, the thing is, like Russia's also looked. They've looked at this and said, "Thanks, but no." <laughs> um. Uh, the, the 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 conditions for a peaceful resolution of the conflict were not in place at the moment, and we paid a lot of attention to our Chinese friends' plan. Uh, but for now, we don't see any conditions which are going yep. to sort of bring. It this is Russia peace. saying this. This yeah. is Russia saying. Sorry, this. the Russia that's trying to stop the war, apparently. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to stop the war. They were trying yeah, to, but they're, they're, we want to stop the war. But right. This isn't an option. I'm not <laughs> vibing it. No cap. It's pretty mid. So I'm just not vibing this. Oh, plan. that is yeah that. That is a mid AF take from Putin there. Mm. Oh, the conditions I don't aren't any right. Of these things are. The Does conditions not pass aren't right. My vibe check. The conditions aren't right for me to end the war that I started for no reason. <laughs> and it's, it's, I decided it's not right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Daddy. Okay. Thanks, okay. thanks, Daddy. Thank you, China. Appreciate your input. We are great friends. Also, no. <laughs> It's, yeah, it, it does you know, feel. You know kind what of it is? Like, it's like when your friends really drunk at a party, and they're like still slamming shots, and you're like, "Bro, you like, really you've need had to slow enough. Down. You've had you've, you've had, had enough. enough man. You need to slow like, down. You need to drink a glass of water." And your I'm, friend, I'm giving, you, I'm giving you a picture of water. You're holding their hair up as they're vomiting in the bowl, and they turn around to you and they go, "I say you and I've had enough." <laughs> yeah, that's Russia right now. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. You're not my fucking dad. <laughs> Oh. Speaking of, speaking on that of note, dads, yeah, <laughs> speaking dad- of vomiting into a toilet bowl, well against our own interest and having no intentions of stopping. That's basically been the last hour in your ears. Oh, there you go. I was going to say, <laughs> sp- speaking of daddies, uh, this daddy needs to go to bed. Um, this has been, uh, we are, have been, and always will be our natural selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Make sure you follow us on all the bullshit social medias that have, do, or ever will exist at Unnatural Show. That's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and motherfucking TikTok and Twitch. 
That's where we do our live streams when they work. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at George Sipos. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath. You can follow me down to the Chinese Embassy where I'll be doing a workshop on uh, strategic plans and how mm-hmm. to develop them and bullet points and perhaps Ooh. 12's too much. Maybe you need do to you, simplify it a little bit. Could you teach me in detail how to avoid strategic risks? Because that is something I, will, I need more yeah. information on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. I love your faces. Uh, We'll see you next week. No smart-ass remarks. No. No.